What's going on, man? Welcome back to the basement. I'm Ron, and today we have yet another new video format on the channel. Don't worry, I don't think that this is going to be the schedule moving forward. I'm just trying new stuff this week just because why not? Let's change things up. And we had our 10 stats videos yesterday. Today, we're going to talk about my 10 must start players for week seven. We're going to go across all the positions, and the idea here is. I come out with my weekly rankings every Thursday on patreon.com slash Ron Stewart. You can get that at the top of the description, top of the comments below. And I compared my rankings to expert consensus rankings on Fantasy Pros. And any player that I was three spots or more higher on than consensus, I jotted that player down. So these are players that I am higher than consensus on for week seven. Ten players that should be on your radar when you set lineups tomorrow. So with all that being said, make sure you go down below, subscribe, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Let's go. Thirsty, thirsty, trying to choose. I mean, I know I'm critical. My nitty bag. My all right, now for our first player here, we got a two-for-one special. And we're going to kind of, we'll, we'll go with the studs up top, and we'll get increasingly deeper as we go here. But our first must start, is DK Lockett, or what the hell? DK Lockett, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, two for one special here. I have them as my wide receiver seven, Metcalf, wide receiver 11, Lockett. Expert consensus rankings has DK Metcalf at wide receiver 10, Lockett at wide receiver 14. So I'm three spots higher than consensus on both wide receivers. And the idea here is this game, Seahawks versus Chargers, is going to be really fun for fantasy has the highest over under of the week at 50 and a half with the Seahawks as five point underdogs, which means the Chargers are already a team that is prone to dragging teams out to shootouts because they score, they play fast. And with Seattle being on the road as underdogs and behind, they're going to have to keep up with the pace and the tempo of the Chargers offense scoring at will against a Seattle defense that is 26th in past DVOA. Now, you might look at last week. Okay, they didn't draw out the Broncos to a shootout, the Chargers. Well, what happened was that the Broncos have the best pass DVA defense in the entire NFL and held Herbert without a passing touchdown for the first time in 26 games. The Seahawks defense is not going to do that. They're actually going to do the opposite. They're allowing the sixth highest explosive, or no, this is actually the Chargers defense. The Chargers defense is allowing the sixth highest explosive pass percentage with the second most completions allowed over 15 yards at 19 on the year, which means... The Chargers are prone to the deep ball, and we know that's where Lockett and Metcalf thrive. Geno Smith is third in the NFL in completions over 15 yards with 20. He's second in the NFL in completion percentage on those passes of over 15 yards at 62.5%. And he also leads the NFL with six touchdowns on passes that travel 20 yards or more in the air. Metcalf and Lockett have eight dots of 12 and 14. Both wide receivers are tied for second in the NFL with two touchdowns on 20-plus yard passes. Everything points here to this being a spot where one or both of these Seattle wide receivers could blow up. Again, I have Metcalf at wide receiver 7. I have Lockett at wide receiver 11 against a defense that struggles against a deep ball, which is pretty much what Geno, Lockett, and Metcalf thrive doing. Our next player we're going to talk about here is T. Higgins at home versus Atlanta. Now, he only had 10.7 points last week, but he's now fully healthy, and he has put in his first full practice this week since week four. He is officially off of the injury report for the first time since week four. Now, this is a really cool chart by Sam Hoppin. He does great work over at 4 for 4 and this shows the Bengals' weekly pass rate over expectation. With each week, they continue to pass the ball more and more, and it's really coming to a head here and this is the perfect spot versus an Atlanta defense who has the 23rd best pass DVOA defense, allowing the six most fantasy points to wide receivers. There's going to be plenty of points. They have The Bengals have the third highest implied team total of the week at 27, and that is why T. Higgins is wide receiver 12 in, in expert consensus rankings. He's my wide receiver eight. That's how high I have him. I want to say I have Jamar Chase like wide receiver three or something. They're both top eight options. It's a perfect setup here for these wide receivers to go off now I kind of know I, I dust up I dusted up on those two players or three players uh on our video yesterday in 10 stats but I wanted to kind of dive a little bit deeper into them we're also going to keep things moving pretty quickly here um because I, I want this to be kind of like a, a quick I'm going to say I want this to be a quick hitter video it's going to end up being like 25 minutes long but I would like it to be a quick hitter ish 
type video. Now, our next guy is going to be a quarterback. We never get to talk about quarterbacks on here, but we have Jared Goff. I have him as my QB 14. The market has him ECR as QB 18. So four spots higher. And essentially, the market thinks that he's like, I guess you would call that like a QB 2. QB 14 is like a high-end streamer, I guess. And the stonks on Goff right now are pretty low, right? They play against the Patriots. They give up a goose egg, zero points on the day. They have a bye week. Feels like Goff hasn't done something in a while. Now, I know that the Dallas defense is elite, but I still think that this is a fine spot to start Goff if you're in a spot where you have to start Goff. He was QB5 on the season prior to the Pats game. And this week, this Dallas versus Detroit game has the second highest over-under of the week at 48.5. There's going to be a lot of points scored. Both of these teams are top six in pace, so you're going to have a lot of plays, a lot of points. And the Lions as 6.5 point underdogs. I don't know why I didn't say 6.5, but 6.5 point underdogs, they're going to be forced to throw the ball. So you get this offense now rejuvenated, coming off a bye. They have DeAndre Swift back. Almost dropped my water. They have Amon Ross St. Brown back. He has all of his weapons. He should be good to go. He should get a nice efficiency boost from that. I think you're going to get, going to get a lot of volume in this game script. Now, obviously, I'm starting the cars of the world over him. I'll start the Aaron Rodgers of the world over him. But once you're out of the woods on that and it's QB 13, QB 14, I think Goff is more than a fine streamer if you have somebody like Jalen Hurts or Kirk Cousins on a bye. Now, in that same game, we have Dalton Schultz. I have him as my tight end 14. Expert consensus has him as tight end 19. And the reason for that is Schultz is practicing fully this week. He should be good to go. I know that I think that he had a goose egg last week because he was like a late inactive. He's a tight end 37 in points per game on the season. He's been super, super disappointing. But with Dak returning, he should be more involved than ever. He had a 13 point game in week one with Dak Prescott. Since then, I don't think that he's scored over 10 points or even like eight points since then. Now, the good news is with Dak back, this pretty much, I think more than anyone else, this really rejuvenates Dalton Schultz fantasy value. This is his splits with and without Dak from last year to this year. And you have four games without Dak. He has 1.73 points per game. He averages 3.5 targets per game. With Dak, he averages 6.41 targets per game, 12.99 points per game. That is very easily top 12 tight end type numbers. And they get a layup matchup here versus the 32nd ranked pass DVOA defense in the Lions. Dalton Schultz comes out here racks up targets, scores like 15 points. He probably skyrockets to like a top eight to 10 option moving forward at tight end. Just have to see what it looks like with Dak after the injury. Our next player we have is Melvin Gordon. I really should have numbered these. I think this is probably what, number five or six? What, Lockett, Metcalf, three, four, five. I think that this is number six. But we have Melvin Gordon here. I have him ranked as my RB30. Expert consensus has him ranked as RB35. And it's not really a matchup thing. The Jets are a tougher matchup than they're given credit for. They're 12th in rush DVOA defense. They're allowing the 19th most fantasy points to running back. So by no means a cakewalk at all like they were last year or the year before. But it's more of having conviction in the Gordon versus Latavius Murray side of the argument here. And I know that Gordon had a, had a bad week, right? He had three carries, eight yards. He sits out the rest of the game. Latavius Murray has 15 carries, for 66 yards. And Murray played okay. But I don't think, like the fact that they didn't trade Melvin Gordon and they didn't cut him and they're coming out and saying he's our starter for this next game, I think that he's going to get some squeaky wheel treatment here. I, I My gut feeling is he out carries and out touches Latavius Murray, probably scores a touchdown and has a fine week this week. He's much more of a boom bust here because he could just be relegated to under five carries again and then from there, okay. Melvin Gordon has burned us enough. We're done starting him. But I do think you can start him this week as an RB2 streamer with a kind of squeaky wheel, like sympathy goal line carry possibly coming his way. Now, our seventh player here is Brandon Ayuk. He's my wide receiver 23. He's ECR's wide receiver 26. So I have him three spots higher than consensus. I, I wish I could have him a little bit more. But once you start getting into the top 24, you know, you're putting him over legit, legit options. Uh, but this... 49ers offense was different last week. Jimmy Garoppolo had 41 attempts. That was the most pass attempts that he has had or that the 49ers have had all season. Their second highest was 30. So that's an 11 attempt increase from their second highest output. And that was coincidentally Brandon Ayuk's best game of the year. 
and a game where he had 10 targets for the first time this season. Now, the volume should be there again, right? They're going to be they're going to have a banged up defense. They're playing against Kansas City, who is going to score at will, probably force a little bit of a shootout here. Jimmy Garoppolo should probably be game for like 40 plus attempts again. And if you have that environment, I think Ayuk is a great start against a Chiefs defense that is allowing the fourth most fantasy points to wide receivers. Then at number eight, I told you guys, we're getting deeper as we go here. We have Hunter Renfro. I have him as my wide receiver 33. ECR has him at wide receiver 43. He didn't practice Thursday, but he got to practice it on Friday. And it's pretty simple here. If Darren Waller is out and Renfro is healthy, he probably needs to be in lineups. He averaged 16 point, or 17 points per game when Waller missed time last year, 14.4 when Waller was in the lineup. His targets go from 7.5 to like 8.5. He becomes more efficient, I guess. I don't know. He was balling out last week without Waller or last year without Waller. He's finally back healthy. He was balling out earlier in the season. Uh, he had that one tough matchup against the Chargers who had Bryce Callahan at slot. So that was a tough matchup. Second game, he comes out. He plays well, but then he gets that concussion in like the fourth quarter or whatever. We haven't seen him since, but I imagine the minute he comes back here in a game like this versus Houston, the Raiders have a 26.3 implied point total, which is the fourth highest of the week. They should score points. He should be involved. I will say Desmond King is their slot corner, who's a little bit of a tough matchup here, but he's not, it's not the end of the world. I do think Renfro can still squeak out. Like if he had like four for 50 and a touchdown, it wouldn't shock me at all. I think he's a fine flex play this week. Now in that same game and under that pretty much same sentiment, we have Foster Moreau here. His ECR right now is tight end 36. I have him as my tight end 15. This is a spot where Moreau is going to be without Waller in a layup matchup. Now volume is tough to come by at tight end. And Foster Moreau, in six games over the last two years without Waller, he has averaged five targets per game. Five targets per game would be good for 15th among all tight ends right now. I've met tight end 15. So I think that's right in the area he should be. He also only had one touchdown during those games. That's why his fantasy points, eight point doesn't, doesn't seem that great. The touchdowns weren't there. But now this is an offense that can not, not quite score at will, but you have... Carr, Devontae Adams, more efficiency. You have Josh McDaniels now. They should be able to score more points. I do think for a guy like Foster Moreau, who's a tight end, like slash red zone guy, I think that one touchdown in six games without Waller is a little bit fluky. I think that he's more in play for touchdowns here. The volume should be good. Some of the more, some of the better tight ends like Dallas Goddard are on by. I think Moreau is a fine tight end streamer option this week if you're in a pinch. Now, our last start is Wandale Robinson, and I wish I could move him up higher. He's my wide receiver 45. He's expert consensus rankings, wide receiver 48. So only three spots here. And he's playing in Jacksonville. <laughs> my God. I hope that you said it. I hope you said bless you. Um, but yeah, three spots isn't a ton, but I think that he is a really, really good flex play in deep leagues. Or if you're in a desperate spot where you need a flex bad, I think he's a great option this week in his first full game last week he had four targets three catches 37 yards a touchdown he had 12.7 points and that was only on like 30 percent of the routes and Dable came out last week or this week I guess you could say and he said Brian Dable hopes to get more snaps out of rookie wide receiver Wondell Robinson this week they used him carefully coming off that knee injury so they used him sparingly in his first game back I think in this next game again they have no talent on this in this wide receiver room you have Marcus Johnson you have David Sills Galladay's not playing. Tony's not playing. They need as many playmakers as they can get. I think Wondell Robinson makes a lot of sense to get a big uptick in usage this week, or not even usage, but just being on the field this week. And if we see his snaps go from 30% to like 60% or 80% or 90%, he is going to be on rocket ship watch, where his efficiency per route last week was really, really strong. He is the only rookie not named Drake London to have a 30% or better target per out run, a two yard or better yards per out run, and a 75 or better PFF grade. All the wheels are up. The Jaguars are a tough defense, but their one flaw is their slot. Among 29 corners with 100 or more slot snaps, Jacksonville slot corner Darius Williams has the third worst coverage grade of those 29. He let Curtis Samuel have that coming out party in week one where he had 11 targets, eight catches, 55 yards. I don't think Wanda Robinson's going to come out here and give you like, 12 for 120 and a touchdown like no one's saying that but you know 6-4 you know 6-4 65 and a touchdown sounds in the ballpark now that is going to do it for us today 
I just wanted to come on here, give you guys a quick 10 player, quick hitter. Got this down to 15 minutes. Love to see it. Um, again, if you want the full rankings, these are just 10 players that I am higher on than consensus. If you want the full rankings, that'll be on patreon.com slash Ron Stewart at the top of the description and the top of the comments below. I believe I'll be posting this around. Yeah. So it's 140 right now. I'll be posting this around like 2 PM. I should be streaming later on somewhere around like six, seven, 8 PM. So look out for that. We'll be ripping some battle royales on underdog and answering some start, sit, waiver question, trade questions, whatever you guys got for me. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed Leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. I got the juice, I got the juice. Channel, chat on zone. Foolies glad I'm on. Even my haters kind of glad I'm on. Rest in peace to my bag of on. Rapper song, singer, suspended subpoena from Mr. Meaner.